The... We all know the refrigerator is the most dependable appliance in your home. It runs for years without attention. The alternative is a kind of refrigerator in reverse. If you'll put your hand near the coils of your refrigerator, you'll find a large amount of heat being given off. This is the kind of heat the alternative uses. Here's how it works. Because of its low boiling point, 20 below zero, the liquid freon in the collector has been turned to freon steam. There's a simple physical principle that gas under pressure becomes very hot. So our next step is to pressurize the freon in a gas pump. The pressurized gas comes out of the pump at 180 degrees, much hotter than you could stand to touch. The hot gas is passed to a heat exchanger and the heat is transferred to water. The water comes out of the heat exchanger at 138 degrees, still hotter than the water in a normal hot water heater. Let's look at the system in detail. The technology is simple and dependable. The completed unit requires very little space and can be installed in your home in a few days without major alterations or inconvenience. The electrical components of the system are contained in one small tray. Here the elements are assembled and wired. The piping and conduits for both liquid and gas are constructed with the long proven techniques of refrigeration installation. The entire system is put under high pressure and tested for leaks. For absolute security, the system is tested both during assembly and when the unit is completely mounted in its case. The alternative is finished and ready to be delivered for installation. These panels, believe it or not, can take heat out of sun, wind, rain, snow, sleet, and hail 24 hours a day or night. They also can provide 100% of the heat for your house, all your domestic hot water, at a tremendous amount of savings. You know, as incredible as it sounds, these panels really will even work at sub-zero temperatures. I'd like to show you a little demonstration of that. As you can tell, it's cold in this refrigerator. Right inside here, we got our evaporator collector sitting here in a little array. We got them all equally spaced. And if you notice, it's 10 degrees below zero inside here. This over here is the processor. This is the business end of the proposition. What we're doing here is we're taking the Freon, running it into the freezer, pulling the heat back out of the freezer, running it in here and making hot water. We're delivering the hot water over here to a little crock pot. All the hot water in this crock pot is actually being made hot by all the heat we're pulling out of that freezer in dead air space. You'll notice we got some awful hot water. It's 130 degrees. That's hot. You know, a lot of people think that the alternative is a regular heat pump or another version of a heat pump. I've even heard it referred to as a super heat pump. Well, it isn't. As a matter of fact, the major difference between the heat pump and the alternative, our technology, is this collector area right here, our evaporator. You notice it's very thin, but we're taking Freon and circulating it through this evaporator, and the surface of this evaporator has a direct effect on the Freon inside. And I'll show you why I say that in a second. Number one, in a heat pump, the ambient temperature, surrounding air temperature, is all important. Whatever the air temperature is, that's going to determine what it does. In this case, what happens to this panel, this collector, is what's going to determine what happens to the Freon inside. I'll give you a point in, in, in fact. If I had snow packed on top of this panel a foot, foot and a half deep, the temperature of snow is around 30 degrees, above zero. The Freon that we put in will take heat out of anything warmer than 20 degrees below zero, 50 degrees of heat exchange. So if the outside temperature was zero degrees, that wouldn't have much effect on something that has 50 degree effect on the Freon at that point in time. Another point would be if I had the sun shining directly on this panel, the panel can get as hot as 105 degrees. It's solid aluminum in a direct line with the sun. Now let's say it was a winter day and it's 50 degrees outside. What difference would that make if the sun was shining directly on the panel and I had something 105 that I was sending Freon through? As the wind will take that force of nature as well, whips across the top of this massive surface area, eight by three, top and bottom, 10 different panels, you can see that the friction of the wind will not only heat up the surface area and affect the Freon gas going inside, but also the wind will cause a heat exchange to happen more rapidly. The alternative works automatically, producing heat on demand and shutting off when none is needed. It isn't even necessary to remove your present heating system. 
In fact, it's to your advantage to leave it exactly as it is. The alternative is designed to work with your present system. It will heat your house as well as providing hot water. And every minute the alternative operates, you're saving expensive fossil fuels like oil and gas. In addition, we interface the alternative with your system in such a way that the alternative operates only when it can save you money. And if it isn't saving you money, you're paying nothing. Last year we installed a remarkable heating device on hundreds of homes. This year we intend to install thousands more. The interesting and unique thing about the process was that our system was going on the homes of the average American. Middle income America possibly.